those moments will be lost in time. Like tears. Question to ask. I forgot to do that this week to get us in do the mood. You, do you prepare? Do you prepare questions for us every week to start off the show? That's adorable. Yeah, you know those <laughs> silly questions he asks. Like, like, here, I'll I'll pick a question. Um, if you had to be any animal in the world besides human, which one would you choose? Uh, dog. It's an op- it's an open floor. Anyone can answer. <laughs> dog. Really? I'm trying to think Why? of who else has it better. <laughs> a lot of a lot of animals kind of have it better. Yeah, yeah, although you're right, you would have to go a little higher up on the food chain than a normal like, animal. Like you, they have no predators. Well, yeah, no natural predators. Yeah. Right. So you know, and you get pampered, and like some you do, know, some you... get treated like shit. <laughs> some have jobs. Some dogs have jobs. <laughs> I'm thinking about my dog mainly. <laughs> yeah, your dog. You would be Otis. You would want to come back as Otis. Yeah, sure. Why not? Ija? Um, an otter. Does they hold hands? <laughs> <laughs> they hold hands. Yeah, they hold hands to not float away from each other. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> and they open up. They open up clams on their tummies. <laughs> Which is so dope. <laughs> I have seen that before. It's very. It's very adorable. Phil Miners is a pro uh, otter podcast. Pruder, prodder. <clears throat> Yeah. Uh, speaking of, welcome to Phil. Wait, you didn't, <laughs> the you didn't podca- do yours. Uh, kangaroo. Welcome to <laughs> Phil. It's the podcast <laughs> where we choose a film to watch that at least one of us hasn't seen before. Wait, we watch it and we so talk much. about it. My name is Michael. There's I'm Dan. To unpack. And that's it. Uh, and that's it. Uh, uh, and this episode of Film Runners is sponsored by Enamory.com, fine art photography, and other wall art uh, <laughs> from our friends. Uh, Hell of a wide Ash- read. Ashley King and Aaron Samby. Uh, use code RUNNERS10 at checkout for 10% off your first order. Or you can subscribe to their new Enamory art packs. It's a subscription service where they send you um, a bunch of five, uh, eight by f- eight and a half by 11 uh, prints that they have and you can sign up for a one-time three month six month or 12 month subscription and the more you sign up you get uh, some free gifts so check it out now would you call them a creative couple <laughs> uh we don't have enough time michael uh... <laughs> that's e-n-a-m-r-o-y.com <laughs> uh michael yes this week was a classic michael pick and i will classic. say it is a a very classic <laughs> uh, oh no <laughs> i don't know what that means it means it uh, took place a long time nope <laughs> well it did take place a long time ago <laughs> it, it did it actually did and uh it is classic was made sense for sure yeah yeah yes it was made and took place a long time ago it was made almost as far back as you could make something and have it take place at the same time I guess 50, 50, give or take 50 years. Wait, wait, <laughs> but well, still... hold on, wait, hold on. <laughs> what? What well, is that question? Was... It's the... It wasn't a question. Oh, it was a no, no, no. It's... it's the only time period where you can make a movie that takes much. place at the same time? Is that what you said? No, it isn't. I've I've interrupted you several times to say you're incorrect in what I'm saying. <laughs> One, it wasn't a question. Two, I didn't say that. <laughs> what did you say? Because... because... Like Braveheart takes place a long time ago, but you couldn't make a movie that takes place at the same time as Braveheart because movies weren't invented yet. 
<laughs> so there's a point. The earliest God. you can get. The earliest you point. can get. <laughs> it wasn't really a point. It was just a comment. I wasn't looking to follow it up with anything. It was just a thought that popped into my head. That because the, you could you could make a movie in 1945 about 1945, and that's a classic movie about a classic. But you couldn't make an 1880 movie in 1880 and call it. Like, you could. You, I mean, you wait. could because when were movies were roughly invented in 1880 or so, right? Like, so I mean, train arriving at a station. The the movie where people jumped out of the way of the screen because they thought a train was going to get them. That took place at the same time, but that's like the earliest. You could make a movie that takes place at the same time as when the movie was made, you know? Right. So when would yeah. a movie, what's the earliest time period you could call a movie a classic? Like when yeah, did, when did Train coming at? <laughs> train coming at you. <laughs> no, that was the remake. That was the 80s remake. Oh my God. Train coming at you. Speed three. Train coming at you. I think that must have been the 1890s or something, right? Yeah. So you're saying 1890s right? is when the first movie was made. Yeah, roughly. When when could you call it a classic? 1920? Would you be like, oh, that classic movie? Yeah, give it a couple decades, and then a thing can be a classic, I think, yeah. Or there are instant classics. Like, you think people walked out of the tent, or sorry, jumped out of the tent where they were rolling, train arriving at a station, and they were, were walking away, they're like, that's an instant classic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely watching that again, that's great. What movie? <laughs> this, this. Uh, the movie I chose was Bad Day at Black Rock from 1955. That's a long time um, ago. It is a long time ago. It actually doesn't take place at the same time that it was made. It no, it doesn't. Place 10, 10 years, years earlier. earlier. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's uh, directed by John Sturgis, stars Spencer Tracy, Robert Ryan, Anne Francis, Walter Brennan, Lee Marvin, Ernest Borgnine, Dean Jagger. A whole slew of classic actors and uh it's about a guy who sort of he he arrives in this shitty shitty little town in a train that hasn't stopped there in four years uh so everyone's like whoa a train arriving at this station <laughs> this is an instant classic um but he has some agenda and the town has something to hide and they come into conflict with each other over that they sure do. Um, and neither of you had seen it, correct? Nope. nope. Yeah. Okay. So I would like to hear Inch's thoughts first. Um, I really liked it. At first, I thought I was going to be absolutely bored by it because I was just like, why is everybody so mean to this man? But as soon as like the film no Irish aspects like came into it, I was... 100% all in and I forgot what Spencer Tracy looked like so when I first saw him <laughs> I was just like oh that but <laughs> overall Carl from up he looks like Carl from up <laughs> he really does <laughs> <laughs> or I mean vice versa Carl from up looks like him. <laughs> but yeah overall I really really enjoyed it um yeah there's some things I have a problem with but I, we'll get to that yeah but Tim <laughs> No, wait, first, before Tim says that, you have a good point about the film noir aspects that it, it is, speaking of time periods, it's a very cool time where you can have a film noir western, yeah. like, butt up against each other, and it makes sense and works, Yeah, which is cool. Uh, now, Tim. Uh, yeah, I don't know if modern movies have ruined me for older movies, but I, just, I couldn't get into this one at all. Um, I really... I really like the idea around it, but I didn't buy into the premise at all, and I th thought I didn't like a lot of the characters in it, especially well, the dude. I, that's that's fair, but I would argue you're not supposed to like almost any of the characters <laughs> except Spencer Tracy. But if you didn't like him, then yeah, for sure you would. Yeah, I. Um, so yeah, I overall I uh, weren't into it. I, I wasn't into it. No, Michael, you obviously picked this movie. What do you like about it? Uh, everything. It's one of my favorite movies, actually. Uh, I think it just has an inherently interesting premise in my eyes uh, because it just starts off instantly with the town being so aggressive to this seemingly <laughs> unassuming man that it's that's intriguing to me because it's like, like why the fuck are they being dicks? And obviously, you know, they did something terrible. Um, 
But then, so that's not really a mystery other than what was it that they did that was terrible. But then there's the mystery of why is he there? Like, you don't know if he's secretly investigating something or whatever. So I guess teasing out all the motivations keeps me interested. And then I just think it's like a really well shot movie. Yeah. Like, I think it's, it's, it's a very good looking film. It's got a cool set. It's just my kind of like movie 100% <laughs> like if if I could make a film it might be a remake of Bad Day on Black Rock because I just love it so much just the and you know what it has a, a, a like I think we get rightfully so we think of <laughs> older times as being shitty and less enlightened and less um, uh, uh, progressive or whatever which is true <laughs> however <laughs> it is cool when you see things that have good messages or good intentions that like things that would get criticized for it today like if this movie came out today and it was a guy complaining about like not complaining about that makes it sound <laughs> but there is like a message in there about like racism and inter how fucking awful internment camps were and shit like that mm -hmm. and if that came out today you'd still have people being like oh this fucking dude's a cock <laughs> why does he care about it <laughs> like we got a fucking soy boy what are soy boy <laughs> coming into town I don't know. It's just cool. It's just got a. Uh, it has a good message. I think a lot of good actors. The dialogue can be a little overwrought sometimes, but overall, I think it's solid, and I think it's you know great looking. <laughs> and uh, 120 minutes. Yeah, or not 120. Sorry, no, an hour 80 and 20 minutes. minutes. Yeah, hour and 20 minutes. Yeah, 80 minutes. So it flies. It's by. a breeze. Yeah. So here's the thing. Here, <laughs> let's start. Let's start off. Yeah, I I couldn't get into Spencer Tracy at all. I did not like him. Like I, uh, me as a person, didn't like him and didn't feel for him most of it. Because I think Weird. at the very <laughs> at the very beginning, he started to be kind of like a badass with like the hotel where he signs himself in to the room. I guess if here's the thing, that may be a <laughs> badass to you, but it didn't seem. I don't. I didn't find that badass. So so much as like it was more just ignoring the very obvious like antagonism towards him and pretending to like it was he was supposed to be kind of cool but badass seems like an exaggeration there is a badass scene there are a couple <laughs> of badass scenes but i wouldn't call signing into the hotel one of them but i, I uh, continue right but I, you can say that the tone in which he did that was um conflictive right like he he wasn't gonna listen to their shit he's just gonna do what he wants anyway right yeah yeah kind of but you're still you're making it sound like I'm leading the question to because when he gets out of the bath, he's like a total pussy to the guy who's sitting in his bed. Because he doesn't want any conflict. He literally just landed in that yeah. hotel. Then why did, was he conflicted with the guy he in the wasn't, hotel? He wasn't uh, conflicted I, with I the think guy you're in the hotel. <laughs> no, you're definitely exaggerating how antagonistic he was in that. He just, he just pretended to ignore the hotel guy's bullshit about all the rooms being taken and signed in anyway and went upstairs. Yeah, I... he, he didn't like threaten to kick the guy's ass or anything. Also, I would argue like that sort of scenario is much less intimidating than if you're freshly out of a shower in just a robe and you walk <laughs> in and some cowboy's lounging on your bed, <laughs> which in some cases could go very right. <laughs> in this case, could have gone very wrong. No, but he just doesn't. He doesn't. Need, he doesn't seem conflicted with this guy now. And he I, just keep using think, the word conflicted, I which I don't think is, is a conflicted. word. Like he no. was very sarcastic. Like after the yeah. okay, after the initial sorry, like the after the initial meeting with the hotel dude, he was very sarcastic. After the homeboy was just like, "We don't have any rooms," and then he was just like, "I bet you don't," but let me just check. And then he opens the book and takes a room. But then kind of coming I uh, coming out of the shower and then seeing a guy like laying on your bed and then that's not honestly either being combative that's being sarcastic because this guy is just being an ass oh like a room and we were all filled up uh have you any idea where I could this is 1945 mister there's been a war around. Uh, ended a couple of months ago didn't it yeah the OPA lingers on you don't know about the OPA? No, you tell me. Well, for establishments with less than 50 rooms, hotel keeper got to report regularly about, about tenants and uh, 
and registration. There are penalties imposed. You seem to have lots of vacancies. Well, as I said, there are every one of them locked up. The summer showrooms. Or uh, feed salesmen, cattle buyers. The rest, they're spoken for. Surrender to cowboys, ranch hands for when they come into town. They pay by the month. We provide for their every wish and comfort. Do you understand? No, not exactly. But while I'm pondering, why don't you get a room ready for me? That'll be good, huh? I'd like to have a bath. Where is it? At the head of the stairs. Thank you. Guess maybe you're in the wrong room. You think so? What else you got on your mind? Why, nothing else, I guess. You had half a mind, boy. You would have paid attention to what Pete downstairs said. He said this room's here is for us cowboys, for our every wish and comfort. And this one is yours, I guess. When I'm in town. And I'm in town, as any fool can see. You can see that, can't you, boy? Yes, I guess so. Uh, would you mind if I sort of got my things together and found another room? Not at all. But if you really wanted this room, we could maybe settle your claim without all this talk. I believe a man's nothing unless he stands up for what's rightfully his. What do you think? I guess so. You guess so. But you still ain't claiming this room. No, I guess not. You all the time guessing, ain't you, boy? Don't you know anything? Well, I know that uh, ever since I got off the train, that. Everybody's been needling me. Why? I guess I rightly don't know. Yeah, I think it was it was almost the exact same attitude anyway. Like he was I agree, like sarcastic, but avoiding conflict in both situations. Yeah. Like it wasn't like he was like the hotel guy was like I'm gonna beat your ass, and he's like, "No, I'll be your ass." He wasn't Steven Seagal. Like he's, he just was. He ig almost ignored it and was like, "Oh, just, this room looks empty. I'll just take this," and like as if he was acting aloof. Like his whole thing throughout it is avoiding unnecessary conflict and wondering why these people are being so hostile to him. Until there is a scene where he actually shows that he is a badass. Yeah. Like in that scene, like this is jumping ahead, but even in that scene, like he gives up the chair when Ernest Borgnine's like, hey, that's my stool. He gives it up, and then he's like, Ernest Borgnine's like, actually, this stool sucks. I want that one. And he's like, well, why don't you just tell me where to sit? Like, he tries to avoid it until he just can't anymore. And I don't, I didn't find, I guess, I don't know, you just maybe read the tone of the hotel scene different than I did, because I didn't find that out of character from the cowboy in the bed scene. <laughs> no, to me, it, it seemed really flip floppy like i don't know interesting no i didn't i don't know i didn't get that like i guess it was a little forward for him to grab one of the keys but the guy was feeding him such obvious bullshit it was more that he was pretending he didn't hear it than it was him confronting him about it right but if he wants to like not get um combative with anybody he would just i don't know go find somewhere else to sleep but at the same but there time isn't anywhere else to sleep. <laughs> Everybody no was just looking at him as soon as he stepped off. And then didn't somebody confront him literally when he was stepping inside of the hotel? Yeah, he gets off the train and the guy there talks shit to him. Like, he was like, why are you even here? Who called you? Exactly. <laughs> that's somebody? already and it's putting like, okay. you in like some kind of a mood. So when this kid, when you just want to like lay down for like a couple of minutes and have a bath. And then this kid is just like. We don't have mm. any rooms when you clearly do. I could see the keys on the wall. That would make me upset. Because it's just like, yeah. that's disrespectful. And you, you're, you're right. When he walks into the hotel for the first time, Ernest Borgnine and somebody else give him shit on his way in, mm -hmm. too. And then fucking Lee Marvin, the cowboy in his bed, he's in the lobby earlier and he gives him shit in the lobby. Yeah, too. yeah. Like he's getting shit. He's, shit's coming out of all everything. <laughs> So, sorry he was a little forward and, and was like, no, I'll take one of these obviously empty rooms. And then, what did you call him, a pussy? For yeah. Him, like, yeah. the cowboy in his bed? Well, yeah, a guy comes in and goes to, into his bed. He's a pussy there. He's a pussy with Ernest Borgnine on the stools. I don't think this is 
was a thing. <laughs> no, that's insane. It's so weird how aggressively anti Spencer Tracy in this movie you are. <laughs> Just immediately your first thing was like, I didn't like him. <laughs> I didn't You're like right. him. You're, these characters are right. Why is he even getting off this goddamn train? <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? He's so on the side of this awful town. <laughs> it's funny because I'm gonna, what I'm going to say next. Yeah, why are they so hostile with him? <laughs> like, this guy is the know. first guy who's been there in four years, and immediately they think they're going to find out about some guy who lives miles out of town. No, it's kind of two things, because they mention it later when he has that, which one of my favorite scenes is outside of the gas station when him and the main town asshole, uh, Smith, Smith, Reno Smith or whatever, um, they have that conversation outside of the gas station, which I love. And uh, a lot of it is just general anti-outsiders sentiment, which I guess you could say is maybe thematic. <laughs> uh, but then they also find out pretty quickly... Um, because he asked pretty early on that he's looking for Komoko, right? So then once they find that out, then they're afraid either he's there because he knows they killed Komoko or he will find out that they killed Komoko. And that's why they're so aggressive early on. But I think the immediate I, reaction is just like, who is this fucking outsider? I I have a question. I kind of piggybacking off of that i have a question because if they weren't so aggressive in the first place i feel like they could have gotten away with all of that like if they were just nice and being like hey this is the thing welcome to our town don't look over there in the burning building off in the coast but like you know you can you can do whatever you want here have a room like nobody would have been suspicious about any of this at all especially mccready because mm. like smith is doing the most of the talking and kind of mm -hmm. uncovering the mysteries and the threads of all of it. And then my guy is just like, you're literally telling me what you just did. Why wouldn't I stay? Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, you're right. You're right. Like if they were totally welcoming and he just checked, if they were like, oh, Kamoko doesn't live here anymore. His uh, estate burned down and he left and Spencer Tracy went and checked that out and everybody was like, yeah, that sucks, right? And he was like, okay, he'd probably leave the next day, day. But because they're so aggressive and awful, they're suspicious. Like, they give themselves away. They're their own worst enemy. I also think, like, it would have been, it would have been kind of cool to see them. I like them as, I like them being aggressive because they're just assholes. But I also kind of want to see a version of this movie where they're nice to him because that would land you on the suspicious list as well and being like i'm gonna accommodate you so well that you're gonna have five star treatment and then homeboy is just like why are you treating me so nicely did you kill a guy, <laughs> did you kill a guy? <laughs> why would you treat me this thing that is that kind of leads to because that would be cool to see for sure and my biggest criticism of the movie is how Anne francis isn't in it enough as it is <laughs> Um, like, I don't know, she's adorable with her little Jeep and her cap and stuff. No, she's awesome, but then, just why? <laughs> yeah, she's cool. But then that turn at the end, I think we needed, like, a little extra with her. It would have helped a bit. But, like, she could have been that version of a person who was nice to him, who then was also, like, you know, turned on him. Yeah. At the yeah. end. But because we only got, like, two small scenes, or a scene with her and a little tiny scene, and then her ending, it, it didn't really land that well and i just i wanted to see more of her yeah well i want to say that we got 20 minutes into this movie seeing 10 dudes on screen before we got her <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. only woman in this freaking in this town yeah apparently there were supposed to be not supposed to be but there were like gonna be more background extras and stuff like women hanging clothes and you know the womanly stuff they <laughs> no like other background extras but then uh uh stir just got rid of them because he wanted to highlight how like desolate the town is that see um, that would be a problem i feel like in another season later on pardon <laughs> <laughs> that would probably be a problem it feels like a problem well i don't know what you're talking about what has more more people being a problem? No, I feel like only one woman there would be a problem. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. I don't think it's logistically just supposed to be the one woman. There. I think visually we're only supposed to see. But I think. Woman. But I, I agree. Think... Yeah, it's it's crazy that she's the only woman. She gets barely any scenes, and she's a fucking traitor at the end. And then also, like, what was her actual 
like her actual relationship to Smith was that they were together. Yeah. Well, uh, or fucking at least. Yeah, it felt like it because so Smith was like the big dog in town. He was like the popular guy. He basically ran the show. So I think it was like if they weren't in a relationship, he definitely was like, oh, that hotel guy's hot sister is going to be mine. <laughs> like he, he was very like uh, it felt like he owned her. We're going to keep it open until like, another woman or was starts to show up. Yeah, he's not going to lock himself down, but he's like, you know, if I'm lonely, Liz, if I ever <laughs> get j- drunk and mad at the Japanese again, I'll bomb your Pearl Harbor. So, yeah. So to on your point where um, if there was more people in it, I think that would. I think that would add more to it because I felt somewhere throughout the movie, I'm just like, well, everybody, there's 10 people in this town. They all know that they killed somebody. Why don't they just kill this guy now? Like, why did they have well, to wait till sundown and, and try and say that it was an accident or anything like that, right? Like, Well, yeah, I, I, I don't disagree, but I also think that is kind of what they were doing. And there aren't just 10 people. Like, I don't think the implication is supposed to be they're the only people who live in the town, just that visually it makes the town look even more desolate if we mostly see them. Because there's, like, we do see a couple of background extras. I I remember there was, like, a little kid or something, and there was the guy who gives him chili and coffee, like the guy who owns that. (laughs) And there was a guy with a beard in the back. Yeah, yeah. In the chili shop. So I don't... It's kind of like the opposite of... It's weird, because it's kind of like the opposite of Deadwood, where it's just, like, you have all of the townspeople, you see everybody, but if you only saw, like, Al everybody like every important character then that would be kind of like this movie Mm -hmm. but then you wouldn't have all those weird extras just floating around in the background but i kind of like that in this movie because it has us it has us kind of like single out people in character moments except for anne francis and this is very much a film noirish character piece where everybody's kind of it kind of feels like a play it does feel like play-ish yeah yeah, I can see that. Especially those, the like discussions and arguments in the diner and in the hotel lobby. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree with what you're saying. Even though, and I also think, like, I wouldn't change a thing in this movie because <laughs> I love it. But, and even as short as it is, you could pretty easily cut out the sheriff's storyline. Like, oh, poor dude. You, I know. Like, I liked him and I, and it was like solid or whatever, but it's not really necessary. You could have cut him out because we even missed the scene where. So the sheriff's like a fucking drunk. And also, here's another note. I'm jumping around. But when, <laughs> so when, when um, Spencer Tracy's like looking around for Kaboko or whatever, and he, he tries the sheriff's office and he walks in and the sheriff's like sleeping in the cell with the door open. And Spencer Tracy goes to shut the door on him. And he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa no, wait, I'm not the, whatever, I'm the sheriff. See, so he shows up and he's like, oh, sorry, I didn't know. Even then, it's pretty presumptuous for Spencer Tracy to be like, oh, this should be shut. <laughs> right? Like, it could be... See? Again, flip-flopping here. Badass <laughs> pussy. Badass pussy. Yeah, it's real badass to lock up the cell. Lock up the sheriff in his own cell? No, but he didn't know it was the sheriff. But I'm saying it's presumptuous anyway, because the guy is just chilling there with the door open. It could have been anybody. Like, it could have been a guy who got heat stroke and the sheriff was like, oh, sleep it off in the on that bunk in there. And he wasn't there. And Spencer Tracy's like, no, I'd better lock this, take it upon myself to shut this door and lock it. It's just odd. But I don't think it reads like any sort of pussy slash badass dichotomy <laughs> that you seem to be on. But I think having the sheriff at least there and showing that he was a drunk kind of led to how they got away with it in the first place. Like, yeah, he's not going to do anything. Yeah, the fact that even there is, like, quote-unquote, authority in the town, but even then, Smith still runs shit. Like, right. Like, I mean, he fucking literally takes the badge off the guy and gives it to to Lee Marvin. <laughs> he's like, actually, he's sheriff now. <laughs> and they all act like that means anything, which is because, like, Smith's in charge, right? Right. So why didn't they just kill him as soon as he walked in, into town then? Like, like, I don't know. Like, the whole time they're talking about, oh, yeah, we're going to kill him, we're going to kill him. Then just do it. Like, what... What are you waiting for? It feels like well, they cause... needed means and motivation in order to. Like, you don't want to, yeah. like, kind of have somebody step off of a train, shoot them in the face, and then bury them in an unknown grave and then be like, well, we got rid of that problem without actually, like, knowing the dude's name and what he was there for and why he stepped off the train. Especially after four years of not getting visitors. It feels yeah. weird. <laughs> also, I would say two sort of reasons. One um they were trying to egg him on 
to justify killing him like like spencer tracy says after the diner fight they wanted him to attack first so that ernest borgnine could stab him and say it was self-defense right Mm -hmm. um two they don't know who he's told like they don't know anything about him at all so they don't know people might come looking for him knowing he was there at the last right but that was the last place he was there. three sorry i have three points <laughs> three um like spencer tracy says to smith um and it actually happened with the hotel clerk guy killing him in broad daylight as much as they don't show many people in the town there are people in the town and even the goons that work not work for smith but are his like buddies they could turn on him too and spencer tracy was like points that out to him and i'll cut in the clip here or whatever wouldn't have been easier to wait until i turned my back there are too many witnesses present you're still in trouble you're in trouble whatever happens you're sunk you get things a bit twisted you kill kamoko smith and sooner or later you're going to go up for it not because you killed him because i think in a town like this you can get away with it but because you didn't have guts enough to do it alone, you put your trust in guys like this and heck they're here. Not the most dependable of God's creatures. And one of these days they're going to catch on that you're playing for a sap. And then what are you going to do? Peel them off one by one? In the meantime, one of them's going to crack. And when they do, you're going to go down. But hard. Because they got something on you, Smith. Something to use when the going gets tough. And it's getting tougher every minute that they have something on him and people get guilty consciences like they didn't none of them wanted to even kill kamoko they got drunk and it happened and they were assholes for covering it up but even the hotel guy got like so guilty about it that he ends up helping spencer tracy so like because they don't it's it's i don't think it's very realistic for them to just blow him away as soon as he steps off the train. Like, they want to... I didn't say I that, though, either. S- I meant, like, like they... When you didn't they had say kill con- him as soon as he got there. No, you but I mean, like... Kill him as soon as he got there. When did they like have that hour? conversation... When did they have that conversation uh, at the railroad tracks where they say they gotta get rid of him and Ergus Ford and I drive him off the road? Yeah. That was pretty early. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, they he tried to drive him off the road, and they could have said, oh, he died in a car accident. They don't want there to be any questions of them constantly murdering people in the town (laughs) so like i think their plan was at midnight they would take him away and kill him somewhere or whatever with no witnesses just the goons and then they could say he moved on somewhere else but if they blow him away in broad daylight they got the diner guy looking they got the doc looking they got drunk sheriff looking they have the kid they have the lady hanging out the laundry that got cut (laughs) it just seemed like because there were so many of the dudes like the 10 yeah. dudes and there was so <laughs> little anywhere of anybody else in this town it's just like okay it sounds like this, the whole town knows about it and they're just fine with it and they're going along with it so you know if they're all going uh, along with it just but they're not i think that's the thing is like you may have felt like that but the answer is the town isn't all fine with it and even the goons aren't really f- like fine like ernest borgheim really wanted to fucking kill him oh, yeah. <laughs> and i think lee marvin too but like um hotel guy hotel guy wasn't into it he was so guilty about kamoko that he he turned and like spencer tracy said the other guys is very possible they could turn too if you know smith keeps murdering people and making them cover up for him (laughs) i have a question so the killing of kamoko right i have it written down so the killing of kamoko would be a cool title (laughs) oh yeah yeah. by the way that too um, yeah. two, two, <laughs> bad day at Black Rock or the killing of Kamoko. I actually love it. <laughs> it's a great time. So the story is that like Kamoko rented land from Smith and then Smith yeah. said that there was no water on the land, but then Kamoko went down like 60 feet under and then found water. And then well, Smith... hold on. He's, he didn't tell Kamoko that he yeah. knew that and he sold the land anyway. Yeah. He was trying to he fuck was him just over. Bo- yeah. offloading some land like worthless what he thought was worthless land on kamoko okay and then smith and company after that thought that he was kind of cheating him or was it kamoko that thought he was he was getting cheated by smith so that's why he went down to get the water neither way it was um kamoko was just determined to farm so he dug a really deep well and he found like plenty of water to be able to farm and that just made smith piss because presumably he sold the land land cheaper than he would have if he knew it was viable but also more than he than like what he thought was worthless land you know Ah. so that that pissed him off naturally but then it it was his just racism after pearl harbor 
And remember, he went to sign up, but he got, what's it called, 4 f or whatever, when he didn't yeah. pass the physical yeah. and he couldn't join up. And then they got drunk because of that. So it was just, he was racist, but he was also just pissed at him because he felt like Kamoko got one over on him. Even though he didn't, he yeah. bought the land <laughs> fair and square. But, you know, you can't reason with these racists. <laughs> I like the term, like, patriotically drunk. Yeah. <laughs> like... yeah. <laughs> patriotically <laughs> drunk, yeah. <laughs> So, okay, so after all the things, so they went to Kamoko's house, Smith shot him, and then they burned down his house. No, the other way around. Yeah, they burned down oh, his house, down and his when house he came out flaming, uh, oh, that's so they weird. shot him. Yeah, it's really sad. <laughs> about. We never even meet Kamoko, and it's still really, I feel so bad for him. Oh. So what was, what was Kamoko to him, a badass or a pussy? <laughs> Uh, anybody who can dig a 60 foot well is a badass in my book <laughs> <laughs> now there we can agree <laughs> that is true back to Ernest Bordnine trying to take him off the road that yeah. was just bad I hated that entire and again I don't know if it's just because it's an old movie and I've been like desensitized to this it, it just seemed loud for no reason <laughs> <laughs> like he's honking the loud. Horn. That sounds like a TV problem <laughs> more than loud. a movie problem. <laughs> La- too loud. No, it was just it didn't sound like like speed where a bus was like flying down the road and people like New York City traffic and people are honking. But it's just Ernest Ford. <laughs> <laughs> I I I, I, I so agree. They're stupid when Tim says it. He right. <laughs> I, I agree there are a couple of shots with like the them driving like the close-ups of the actors driving with the rear projection screens those always look silly so but i don't care about that but like the okay now then shots the shots of presumably the stunt drivers actually driving oh and there is that one shot that's like sped up <laughs> that looks dumb. right but like the majority of it is two stunt drivers like crashing cars into each other and it i thought it looked good i liked it but then the whole ending is just him like slowly veering down a small hill into like like it did nothing <laughs> well he ran him off the road and then he just oh no it was a minor inconvenience <laughs> yeah he failed but that did you want him to die and then the movie would be, i mean i think you did want him to die but like he ran him on the road and then Tim's like i just wanted he, to see blood somewhere no, but it's like he did what he wanted to do, but it didn't do anything besides cause a minor inconvenience. Yes, like, he wasn't tried a to kill him. He no, tried how? to kill him and he how? failed. It's there. He pushed him. You off. can't. You're telling me no. Shut the fuck up. You're telling me you can't die in a car accident unless you drive off a cliff. No. You psycho. I'm saying that all he did was like veer him off the road, and then when he slowly yes. went down the hill, he did. He just drove away. He didn't try to do anything else. He didn't do bumper cars. What was he supposed to do after bumper that? cars? Just <laughs> smash him, T-bone. Cars. But he could die if he did that. He was trying to run him off the road. He did, but not in a way that killed him. Which way would have killed him? By, I don't know, driving him into a rock. If he veered off into any of the millions of rocks they drove by. <laughs> or, because you seem to love cliffs so much and think that's the only way you could kill a person. They were driving by cliffs at oh some point. Oh my god! <laughs> if, he had, if he had driven off at that point, he'd have killed him. He didn't. He didn't succeed. And then, thus, the rest of the movie. <laughs> I just feel like like how it ended was just the, never be the least, on a jury trial no, for least... attempted murder <laughs> because you seem to don't think you seem to think that isn't a concept at all. Convicted of a crime I didn't even commit. <laughs> attempted murder. Now, honestly, what is that? Do they give a Nobel Prize for attempted chemistry? Do they? No, I just feel just... like the ending to that was so anticlimactic. I. I do agree with Tim and the fact that if you Thank were, you, Aisha. Like, thank you. Thank you. Thank like, you. If you had a plan to kill him on a train, on a railroad track, you might as well just go forth and kill him. And then... But the his, plan... No, no, no. With his plan veer... When his, like... When... What's his face is, like, car veered off the road, his car should have veered off the road, and then he should have knocked in the back of him and then blew up the car. And then he can completely back up and then go with about him in it. What are you talking about? <laughs> Do you guys not understand how cars work? So you wanted Ernest Borgnine to slam into the back of his of Spencer Tracy's car, and then Spencer Tracy's car would magically blow up. And if even if it did that, would somehow not kill Ernest Borgnine too? That's I what mean, you wanted to happen. He can jump out the car. 
Once it rolls what down, what are you the talking hill. about? Yeah, That's use it as insane. some sort of like battering ram, like GTA Five stuff, where you <laughs> jump out and roll. <laughs> you should have thrown yeah. thrown a thrown a sticky bomb on the jeep <laughs> and just driven away. Yeah, talking, then, like I said, I think if it, it was like if this was um, Bad Day in Black Rock from 2009, the car would have flipped a couple of times. It would have. Uh, smashed into the rock, he would have went flying and then he might have gotten hurt and he would have stood up and walked away from the explosion behind him. No, that movie sounds like dog shit. <laughs> that sounds terrible. That's just not the tone of the movie. And like, and then he would have walked back to town. Yeah, and looked like it, a badass. You know what the tone of the movie would be? If he had stopped, instead of keep, like, instead of like him driving on, he would have stopped, looked down, saw if his car was okay or not and then decided if he was going to do something about it or not because he just kept driving on and going back into town like why wouldn't you stop to see if that dude is dead right that's yeah right but what's he gonna so okay so he stops and sees spencer tracy isn't dead what's his plan and don't say ram the car and make it (laughs) because (laughs) that's not a plan that's suicide he could have just shanked him until he was dead but that's the thing he can't he doesn't want to shank him they he wanted it to look like an accident once he's in the pure desert he could just cover him up with sand after he shanked him but then that's the thing though that they don't know anything about him remember they send the telegram and they don't know anything about him they don't know who whether anyone knows he's there or not they don't want more people coming to the town asking questions (laughs) and if he just goes missing remind me to come back to the telegram part (laughs) 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 well i I'm done with the car conversation. I just, I disagree. I think it's fine scene. So we can move on to the telegram now. <laughs> the stupidest thing, the guy comes running in, you know, into the hotel where Smith is, doesn't see Spencer Tracy, hands him the piece of paper in this room, and then Spencer Tracy just gingerly takes it away. <laughs> it was the stupidest fucking <laughs> thing. <laughs> That scene was so good too because like the guy is literally standing there and he's like shaking but not just like oh yeah. no he knows I messed up. David, <laughs> <laughs> that guy is so dumb. Yeah, the 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 telegram dude is really <laughs> stupid. That was all I wanted to say about the telegram part. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was dumb. It was awkwardly staged in that I didn't even I didn't even consider that he didn't see McCready there. I thought he just made a decision to give it to Smith, but I think you're right. I think he didn't <laughs> notice McCready there. And that didn't that never made sense. That I like I didn't pick that up because he obviously saw it there. So. Now one thing I think we can all agree on to move to something more positive. How cool was the Doc's hearse? <laughs> How oh, yeah. cool would that have been if it was able to work? That would have been cool. I love Doc in general. Like, he was such a nice, adorable man that I'm like, oh, I hope you don't die. Because I was kind of convinced that, like, what's-his-face was just going to murder everybody in the town who knew about his dastardly mm-hmm. deeds. But, like, Doc was so nice. And, like, he decided to help. His hearse was super cool. And when Homeboy ripped out <laughs> his plugs. <laughs> that, I, I agree. I really liked Lee Marvin. Uh, that that's him right no the doc is walter brennan no. Lee marvin is the cowboy he was the guy who pulled the thing out though right yes oh hector hector right? yeah 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 yeah, I, yeah. The, um, cowboy. the cowboy in the bed cowboy. yeah he was <laughs> great <laughs> Lee he was, was so good he was really good in that scene and i really liked um i really liked the doc's like sadness at the, like, <laughs> at the very uh, end of that yeah lee marvin was really good in every scene i always forget like the 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 famous now cowboy in the bed scene. <laughs> I always forget that Lee Marvin isn't the main villain because I'm used to him being like, it's weird that he's like the third goon in a, I'm so used to him being either the hero or the villain of a movie that it's weird to see him as like just a goon. Yeah. I but, thought, I, I mean, I thought he was going to be the main goon for, he's very cool. He's got such a good presence. Yeah. He was in a twilight. I do think episode that was really good. Oh yeah. 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 I do think, um, <laughs> Robert Ryan, who plays Smith, I, I thought he was good. Again, I think my favorite scene is just him and Spencer Tr- Tracy talking outside of that gas station. I just really liked it. What were you looking for in Adobe Flat? Uh, like I told you, I was looking for a fella named Kamoko. And like you told me, he wasn't there. 
What's so funny? <laughs> Nothing. Just I, uh, I don't believe you. I believe a man is as big as what he's seeking. I believe you're a big man, Mr. McCready. Flattery will get you nowhere. Why would a man like you be looking for a lousy Jap farmer? Oh, I can't tell me, man. Not so big. No, oh, yes, you are. I believe a man is as big as what'll make him mad. Nobody around here seems big enough to get you mad. What makes you mad, Mr. Smith? Me? Nothing, nothing. Ah, oh, you're a pretty big man yourself. And yet the, the Japanese make you mad, don't they? Well, that's different. After that sneak attack on Pearl Harbor, Batan. Kamoko made you mad. The same thing. Loyal Japanese Americans, that's the laugh. They're all mad, dog. What about Corregidor, the death march? What did Kamoko have to do with Corregidor? He was a Jap, wasn't he? Look, Mr. McCready, there's a law in this county against shooting dogs. But when I see a mad dog, I don't wait for him to bite me. I swear you're beginning to make me mad. All strangers do. Huh? Oh, yeah. Some do when they come around snooping. Looking for what? I don't know. Outsiders coming in looking for something. Looking for what? I don't know. Somebody's always looking for something in this part of the West. To the historian, it's the Old West. To the book writer, it's the Wild West. To the businessman, it's the undeveloped West. They say we're all poor and backward, and I guess we are. We don't even have enough water. But to us, this place is our West, and I wish they'd leave us alone. Leave you alone to do what? what you mean apparently when they shot that scene they planned to shoot all day for it and uh like that's what they laid out and robert ryan and spencer tracy were so good in it that they finished by 9 a.m <laughs> and then uh and then the director was like oh okay we'll, we'll set up for the next thing and spencer tracy was like uh no you said we were shooting this scene today let's go bob <laughs> <Like, laughs> fucked, fucked off from the set so they had to like find a way to shoot around like shoot other stuff that didn't involve Spencer Tracy, which was like almost nothing because he's in every scene in the movie, basically. <laughs> which is funny. Now, I don't really get the time period of this. <laughs> so it's it takes. Wait, place I can answer that. Nineteen forty-five. <laughs> yes. No, but like it take like the setting of this is so surreal. Like this, the town looks so much like an eighteen eighties town. With like right. the Wild West, Deadwood sort of um, look to it, but like it takes place in 1945 with with guns and stuff and cars and I don't know. It was a weird mix of two. Like if you think of um, you know a, a 1950s LA type movie mm -hmm. as a and then compared yeah. to a, a Wild Wild West movie, those two settings kind of like me mesh together in this film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So it's surreal to me that I, I'm like, did places like this actually still exist? I would say 100%. One, I think it's it's purposely supposed to feel like that to you because, again, I think it is like a film noir character walking into a Western kind of. Um, but also I think 100% towns like that existed because like 1945 compared to, like you said, 1880s, that's only 65 60 years. years. Yeah. yeah, like that's not a very long period of time if you think about it like a lot of towns now look the same as they did in the 60s or 70s like especially small towns you know yeah but and they would have bought then, they would have built like some wartime housing by that point you know after in, the wartime not, <laughs> not, not in small towns like why would anyone move there plus i mean they have a gas station they have um they have that diner it looked pretty nice like they have a garage like they do have 1940s stuff there but it you know it can only update so much and why would anyone invest time and effort into updating a town like that <laughs> i think the thing that helped me with like the time period stuff because i i do agree tim like the time period stuff kind of like bugged me out for a second but i think the thing that helped me was when they were talking about kamoko and that they were japanese and i was just like oh like 1945 like the japanese kind of surrendered so that makes sense I like World War Two just ended, so yeah. Wait, how does how does that in any way? I don't know. That helped. That helped. Like, that, help, <laughs> that helped me a lot because it was just like he was Japanese and he was trying to make a better life somewhere else after being in an internment camp. So it was better to go into the middle of nowhere after like the Japanese had surrendered. And I don't know. That helped me out. 
I think that helped me out just like kind of comb in Komoko's story, like the one that I have in my head. <laughs> right. I don't know. I think I think you're right, Tim. Uh, I just don't. I didn't find it off putting. And I didn't find it unrealistic. No, and I think it was I, yeah, purposeful. I, I think <laughs> like, like I think you were supposed to feel that way. You are supposed to feel like you're transported to another time because it's such an out of the way location. Like the train hasn't fucking stopped there in four years. So like I think you were supposed to feel like that. So I think you're right for sure. Right, but I do I, like Incha. I agree with Incha where it kind of like my head. It took me a while to get my head around it, but there was something that finally clicked. It was like okay, this is 1945. I'm in. I know what I'm looking at. I don't know if it was the Japanese thing for me, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta be honest. I didn't quite follow what you were talking about. Each other. But you know what? You seem positive about Komoko, and that's that's all I care about. So it is, uh, for anyone who hasn't seen it, uh, we ultimately do find out that Spencer Tracy was there because uh, he was in, in the war. He served with Komoko's son, who died saving his life. And that's how he lost his arm. And um, so he was there to give Komoko his son's war medal yep. that he won. Um, and that's ultimately why he was there. He wasn't like nefarious or anything. He was, and so it's even sadder when you find out why he was there that the first thing when he gets here, people were like, why the fuck are you here? Get out of here. <laughs> like, it's just such a, you know, nice thing to do to deliver a war medal. Now you mentioned that. Incha, I have a question for you. How long did it take you to realize he didn't have an arm? Or his arm was a, uh, not working? <laughs> literally when they... When, I don't know who said it. Somebody said they... It was the sheriff. It was just like a cripple. And I'm like, how was he crippled? Right? It, it, 100% <laughs> that was it. I was like, did I hear that right? Like, is that... Like, he, he says crit and then he stops. And I'm just like, is he trying to say cripple? Or was he? Or is there some 1945 other slurs that I don't know <laughs> that he was about to say but then guys guys they mention it in the hotel lobby <laughs> when he goes upstairs they talk about it before Hector goes upstairs no I missed it totally missed yeah, it it totally, wasn't until yeah, okay. it, wasn't it wasn't until, until I like, got confirmation said it. like Ernest Borgai makes a joke about it before he walks in and I think the telegram guy makes an odd comment about it but then they legitimately mention that he has one arm once he goes upstairs to his hotel. See, room. but they like pe these people have like blatant racism too. So it was just like, oh, that might yeah. have just been a thing that they just said. Oh. A racist thing again. So it was like and an what, ableist thing. Catholics? I don't know. <laughs> no, an ableist thing. But in order to be ableist, you would have to. But I just thought like, oh, he's like hiding. His so you arm. didn't know. I thought he was Wait. just hiding his arm in a thing, and I was just like, oh, that's fine, that's okay. But then like when somebody actually said, oh, he's a crip, and I'm like, oh, oh, he actually. Yeah, but they actually knows. say he has one arm earlier. <laughs> no, we, I missed those With two inches. Don't cut. worry, I missed all of those <laughs> signs. It wasn't until they were talking about that he could. How is he gonna drive with one arm? That it finally clicked. Thank you. <laughs> no, but Incha, you said you, you brushed off the earlier comments because you were like, "Oh, they're just being ableist." But wouldn't you have to know he had one arm for them to be to know that know. those comments were able? How they would have known that? How would they have known that? It was kind of like the sheriff too. Like, how would he have known that? But then I'm just like, oh. Yeah, the whole movie <laughs> just looks like he has his arm in his pocket. Yeah. Like, like, it's not like it's, like, a pinned-up sleeve or something. No, 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 obvious. but to be honest, guys, <laughs> they didn't... I, I agree that they probably should have cut off Spencer Tracy's arm for this role, <laughs> but they didn't. And that is a mistake, you're right. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> no, I agree, it is... he Because it is just Spencer Tracy keeping his arm, <laughs> his hand in his pocket the entire time. Uh, right. But I, def I definitely picked up that he was one-armed when they mentioned it the first time so i can't relate but it is yeah it's just him keeping his hand up to his side i'm just picturing a like imagine a movie where stephen like stephen hawking was just standing the whole time but they pretend he's in a wheelchair Part pardon <laughs> what are you talking about oh my God, Tim, no! One, Stephen because... Hawking is dead. Two, he's not an actor. So what are you talking about? No, it's like okay, Spencer Tracy. They pretend he, do, he they say he, he he didn't lose an did he lose an arm or is his arm just not working? No, he lost his arm. He has a fake arm. Right. So like, so you get a guy who <laughs> all who, sounds who terrible. doesn't have 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 an issue with an arm, pretending that he doesn't like in the most 
worst way of just putting it in his pocket. <laughs> like, <laughs> What's the... playing a guy who is is physically handicapped? It's just... <laughs> so I tried what? to think of the most absurd opposite of that. And your opposite of that was Stephen Hawking standing. <laughs> I really, I don't, I don't know what's happening, but I, I'm having a lot of trouble understanding what you two mean this, this time. Because I don't understand what you mean, Tim. What do you mean, the opposite of that is Stephen Hawking standing in the movie. Right. Were you, it, like a character say, or Stephen Hawking himself? <clears throat> no, somebody who is playing Stephen Hawking. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> you just said Stephen Hawking. I was trying to think of a famous movie character. Yeah, but- the guy who plays Steven, Eddie Redmayne, who plays Steven Hawking. I think he does walk in that movie. I think it's before <laughs> Steven Hawking was, you know, totally. No, but what's the laziest way to say that he was in a wheelchair? Like, <laughs> put him in a put him in a regular chair the whole time. Maybe, like, don't, okay. maybe don't, don't call people in wheelchairs lazy. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> no. That's... Um, okay, here's a, here's a, no, here's a question for you, though. What is a good way to pretend you have one arm in a movie (laughs) when you have two arms? And if you say, stick your arm through your sleeve and just have the sleeve dangled, fuck off. (laughs) Because that isn't a good way. I think it's a better way. It's a better way. You can always see the arm. I'm not saying dangle either. I'm saying you pin up the sleeve like um, Herman from The Simpsons. But but then you can see see the arm in the shirt. Uh, I agree with Herman from The Simpsons. I do agree with that. That would be a good way. (laughs) CGI it? <laughs> yeah, they should have. You're right. Yeah, that's the answer. They should have CGI. You know what? They should have had. Is... Where's the special edition of uh, Bad Day at Black Rock where they CGI in off his arm? <laughs> yeah, and they add a stormtrooper on a doodad in front of him. George Lucas a lot of scenes. Yeah, yeah. And more, more CGI people in the background. Yeah. So it looks like there's more people in there. It's the Metaclorians that took your arm, my dude. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite scene is when Spencer Tracy talks to Jabba the Hutt about his bounty. Oh my god! <clears throat> oh, oh yeah, there is one thing I want to talk about before we move on. Is it um, the guy at the end who like steals the medal from uh, or just <laughs> Spencer Tracy? No, he politely he asks. Him, though. He, he basically begs it away from him. Come on, yeah, please, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, please, just a taste, just a taste of not being a coward, please. They really, you're kind of right. He, like, guilt trits him into it. It was like, oh, you know what? You were going to leave it here anyway. Just, just might as well just leave them. <laughs> no, he convinces him that it's a good idea because it's something the town can sort of rebuild around as instead of being under the thumb of Smith the entire time. Don't kind of think that that should be a thing that he decides. But that's right? okay. <laughs> like, well, if... I think it would be if Spencer Tracy would have been, if it would, if they swapped it. And before Spencer Tracy leaves, he turns to him and be like, I was going to leave this set here with Kamoko. You might as well have it and build, rebuild around it. Yeah. That would have been much better. Yeah. <laughs> not this mm, I think it's better if the town makes the decision. <laughs> yeah, but they're not making the decision. <laughs> they yeah, they are. They they're just the begging decision. for a medal. They, they made the decision Yeah, no, because Kamoko. Why should they keep making decisions for this man? Well, the, the people who killed Kamoko are in jail. They're not part of the town anymore. <sighs> You see them get taken away. What are you mad about? <laughs> that is what happens. No, but I think, I don't know. Somebody get, needs to give this town the push to. That's what they're asking for. He, he did because he. And the push is, is a, a, a material object that <laughs> they no, asked the, for. The, give me the metal the and push, I'm absolved of my sins. <laughs> the push was getting rid of Smith. Um, symbolically, Kom- Komoko's son's metal is. is is it's a symbol for like living better and being better and not being the racist shitheads that they were and cowards frankly pussies and stupids <laughs> no i wanted the oh sorry i was just gonna say i think it would have been more powerful if um spencer tracy would have given it as a gift and that would have you know ended the ended the saga of spencer tracy and uh black rock instead of you know kind of petering out at the end and be like yeah here you can have this because you asked for it. How, how is that? No, I think that's much more symbolically rich for them asking um, and taking it upon themselves to uh, redeem themselves instead of Spencer Tracy just bestowing it on him and him coming in from the outside and fixing everything. He, he got rid of Smith, but it's it, I like the final moment of the town deciding itself to do better instead of Spencer Tracy forcing it on them or making them. I disagree. 
Okay. <laughs> so the scene I wanted to talk about was uh, the fight, the the fight scene, the actual badass <laughs> moment when Spencer Tracy uses "Ha, what I'm karate," <laughs> beat the shit out of Ernest Borgnine. Uh huh. Hated that scene, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He should have just stayed down. He should have stayed down. And once he got that karate chop in the neck, it's insane that he kept coming back. Right? <laughs> that's, he could barely breathe after that. So here's a question I just thought of. He knows karate. <laughs> and he's friends with Komoko from the war. And Komoko is mm-hmm. Japanese. So which side is Spencer Tracy on? Um, Tim, there, there's such a thing as Japanese Americans. They were put in internment camps. Komoko's son was an American. He was just also Japanese. The whole point was that just because he was Japanese doesn't make him the enemy. Well, that's a good message. <laughs> it, is, it's a, it is a nice little message, isn't it? And it's good. And you know what? As true today as the day this is written, <laughs> just be, because people are different doesn't make them bad. Uh, the only thing I wanted to say about that um, scene was there's a really cool part where um, Spencer Tracy just kind of like nonchalantly chucks the switchblade at Smith. Yeah, yeah. He fumbles around with it. I was like, oh no. I like that scene. Yeah, yeah. I thought it, it definitely felt like it just happened because he like fumbles it in his hands and it lands on the ping pong table. Not ping pong. What the fuck? Pinball machine. <laughs> <laughs> ping pong table in a diner. Uh, yeah, and it, yeah, I like that too. I noticed that part. Also, it, as goofy as you may have found the actual karate, um, I did really like that final flip when he flips him over and he the I presumably stunt double smashes into the stool and like yeah. knocks it over. I like that last flip. What did you think of that scene, Angela? I liked it. He should have just stayed yeah. down. He should have just yeah, like after badass. the first karate chop to the neck, maybe thrown out the door, just stay down. Um, I think uh, I think the most badass line in that whole thing is when he just casually is like. Why don't you just tell me where I should sit? I like that part. I don't know. I just didn't like him. So I did, like, anything he said, I was like, meh. Oh, look at him. He can't even sit in the right what? spot. <laughs> can't even sit in one spot. He's too flighty. <laughs> I don't like him. You're Ernest Borgnine in this movie. Also, it, annoyingly, due to this podcast... Uh, all I could think of when I was watching her in a sport time was, oh, I wonder if we get to see his arms. <laughs> <laughs> wonder if we could see those guns again. He did look a little bit smaller in this movie, I will say. He was a little small. It wasn't as beefed up. You're yeah. right. You're right. It was, it was early. It was 20 years earlier. There was a, a small little scene where he, uh, where they're talking about the railroad track and he's like walking on them, like having the time of yeah. his life. Just skipping along the railroad Just loving track. it. Just loving it. <laughs> That whole scene with all the, the with the good old boys talking outside about what they're gonna do, that's a good example of uh how good looking the movie was. There were a lot of really good shots in that, like really making use of the set that they built for it. Yeah, I will agree with that. Yeah, it's a good looking movie. There's another shot early on that I really liked when um I think it's when Spencer Tracy goes to the garage and then he goes to the sheriff's office. And the boys are still in the hotel lobby and uh, Doc is outside and he's like, oh, well, he's headed to the sheriff's now. And th- all the goons like look out the window and the Doc walks up and he's outside, but you can see his reflection in the window and he's standing beside Smith in the reflection, which is a really odd way to shoot it. But I thought it was cool. Like he was like not really confronting Smith, but kind of trying to, and was like on the opposite side of those goons. It was just a weird shot that I, I appreciated. Hmm. I don't necessarily remember that one. Fuming too hard about what a pussy <laughs> this fucking Spencer Tracy is. If he were such a badass, he'd have two arms. Uh, any more notes before we... No, I'm good. I think we could do John Wick really quick, because... It, no, right? no, it gets right. A road, yeah, a road it gets games, a, or... yeah, it gets yeah, it gets a zero or road games. They don't say yeah. bad day at Black Rock. They don't actually. They don't even say bad day. They say Black Rock a couple times, or maybe do they? They do. Yeah, they, yeah. they do. They do at the very beginning. But I thought that they said that the man was coming from Black Rock, so I got confused. I thought eventually <laughs> we would get to Black Rock. Are you fucking high when you watch this movie? <laughs> No. 
<laughs> just watch it halfway through. You're like, when is this pussy going to get to Blackrock? <laughs> Give me up. Now I know you're just a cameo. Uh, this week it should be a classic Inchipic. It is, yes. Um, so this better this better be classic. I, I swear. we all know Saved by the Bell, right? <laughs> such such a good way to start this. I'm so excited. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. I know Saved by the Bell. We all know what is. We and we can all agree that Saved by the Bell exists, correct? <laughs> we all know the lovely main cast of Saved by the Bell with the even lovely Lisa Marie Turtle. Of right? course. A- absolutely. And we all Was, know uh... her we all know her name is Lark <laughs> Voorhees. We do know her yeah, name yeah, is Lark yeah. Voorhees. Yeah, Mario and... Lopez's um Your Mark Paul Gosler's <laughs> your your No, we're uh, just focusing we're just focusing on Lark. Berkeley's so. oh, your <laughs> Tiffany Amber Thesons. So uh... Your Dustin Diamonds. <laughs> I was going to say your screeches, but yeah, you don't put that So how much do we think Lark Voorhees' cameo cost? She's new and noteworthy. Um, her bio says, So excited to connect with you all on Cameo. Let's have fun with a little red heart. Lark Voorhees' cameo video slash text may not include birthdays or holidays due to religious beliefs. Oh. Oh, yeah. Isn't she, like, hardcore? She's a Jehovah's right Witness. <laughs> Oh, she's a Jehovah's Witness. That's interesting. So, no. So, okay. Do we keep that? Do we take that into consideration? Because if you're booking her, you can't ask her to do a birthday wish. I think you should. Yes. And no holiday. So you can't ask for like Christmas, Thanksgiving. <laughs> you can't ask for Valentine's Day. No Martin Luther Harvard King Day. Day. <laughs> so the only things you can get from her are like a pick me up and like a hello. Yes. I guess you could say. Man, what, so the amount of people you could give this to a gift to goes down significantly. Yeah. Because <laughs> what would you give them? I mean, you could you could give it as a gift for those things. They just wouldn't say happy birthday in them at all, right? Like. But I wonder if it's a You would have to come up with a generic message and then be like, this is a birthday present, but she never says birthday. Right. But what would you tell her it's about? Be like, hey, can you say hi? Well, I guess you could say, yeah, say hi to my friend, whatever. Here's here's the thing that I found interesting, and I think this might um, either affect your kind of um, price of her or not. So she has one, two, three, four, five. She has five five-star ratings and one two-star rating. <gasps> this and- changes <laughs> So is her total of what, a 4.9? 4.8? Her total is a 4.5. Would you like to read? Would you like me to read the yes, rating? Please. Yes, please. So, yes, 100%. please. So, hundred percent. Yes. Let's go. Let's go to the five star ratings first. Let's go. <laughs> let's fucking so, go. No, I just want to hear the two. Stars. No, 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 no. You got to hear the five stars. So, the first okay. five star is thank you so much. The second five star is thank you. Third five star, thank you. Fourth five star, awesome. Fifth five star, the best video I had and I have had and a great experience. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. And the two star rating is it felt pretty impersonal and I felt bad when I gave this to my friend. I feel horrible saying that, but I wanted to be honest. Yeah, see? Oh, <laughs> that's what I was worried about. <laughs> see, I don't know what that means because here's the thing. Here's my thought process right now because my first guess was going to be 30 or 40 bucks. But I don't know if you would be, you would feel like you got, you know, ripped off if you paid 30 bucks and it was like an impersonal message. So now I'm wondering, it's gotta be over 50 or fit at least 50. I think I'm thinking I'm, my number was going to be around 75 or 80. So I'm going to go with yeah. 80. I was surprised you were going to go with 30. That sounded way too low. Okay. Well, who wants a fucking message from Lark Voorhees? <laughs> that is another thing to consider. I, yes. <laughs> um. But uh, so wait, I have a guess. I have a guess. Okay. What did you say? 80 Tim? Uh, yeah. Are you locking in 80 Tim? 80, 80 bucks. Okay. Yeah. Michael? I'll go, f- I'll go 50, I guess. So both of you are wrong. In yeah. a gigantic <laughs> amount of way, uh, <gasps> her request is $1,000. Oh, 
Jeez. What the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? That isn't true. You're a liar. I You're will lying. screenshot it right now and send it to you. A thousand dollars. A thousand dollars for a cameo. And you can't even get people. And you can't even get her to say happy birthday for a thousand dollars. Happy birthday or happy Martin Luther King Day. No, you cannot. <laughs> yeah, that's uh no. Don't buy. <laughs> Don't buy it. Yeah, that's an easy skip. <laughs> what the fuck? First of all, it's, here's the thing. I'm so conflicted now again about the two-star review because at first I was like, oh, I do feel bad for them having to say that to a person that they were like, they wanted to get a thing from. And then once you said $1,000, I was like, I was like, well, yeah, you should be upset. Like, that's fucking, you should get a great video for $1,000. Yep. But then now I'm twisted again and I'm like, why the fuck are you spending a grand <laughs> on the Lark Voorhees cameo? Now I hate the reviewer, and I hate Lark <laughs> I just sent you guys the actual price and the actual review. <laughs> uh, thousand bucks. Like, I don't even know if, like, if Mario Lopez was on here, you think, I think he would set his he, dollar amount at a thousand bucks. He wouldn't even bucks. get a thousand. Insane. No, absolutely not. And he's, like, a well-known television personality. He does, like, I don't know, what's, what's the show? Like, Access uh, or whatever, right? Well, he also does, like, he, isn't he a host on one of the music Joe's too certainly i'm yeah he mm -hmm. hosts lots of stuff he's yeah. like an active like personality right it's like a low red ryan seacrest or whatever and even if, if he said if he charged 400 bucks i'd be like well that's insane but i get it but if he charged a thousand dollars i would be like like no the same way no <laughs> i can't think of a single person who could charge a thousand dollars and it would make sense to me yeah. i really can't in the top of my head i can't think of somebody there's another yeah. can you guys no can you think of anybody um oh yeah i mean there's i think there's a lot of people could that could garner a thousand dollars like no 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 i'm not i mean clearly lark Voorhees garnered six thousand <laughs> <laughs> from it but i'm saying that it would make sense to you you would be like oh yeah that's that's inadequate like let's say seinfeld no absolutely not like oh, you say you wouldn't pay it because a thousand dollars I wouldn't pay a thousand dollars either. But I would be no, like, I wouldn't either, and that wouldn't make sense to me. I don't know. I disagree with that as well. You don't think anybody's worth a thousand dollars for a cameo? I, not one that I can like. I'm trying to think like The Rock, Tom Cruise, somebody like that maybe. But I, no, even them no. Like I'm not a hundred percent sure. I agree with myself coming up with that suggestion. <laughs> I don't think anyone <laughs> should charge a thousand dollars for a cameo. How much do you think The Rock should charge for a cameo? Twenty thousand. Five hundred bucks. <laughs> 500 bucks. Did, Incha, what did you say? $5,000? $20,000. Yeah, see? I agree with Incha. Like, <laughs> like $5,000 for The Rock? That makes sense to me. No, it doesn't. Because The Rock's time is so valuable that five minutes... <laughs> like, you can't take five minutes away from The Rock's schedule. I do He's got agree things to do. with Tim. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck do I care about The Rock's schedule? Well, that's the thing, though, is that... You just gotta if, care about The Rock first. He, he, that's the thing. He wouldn't go on Cameo unless he would do yeah. it for $5,000. There you go. Yeah, I know. But I'm saying, I like, if he went on Cameo, well, that's the catch-22 of it all. If you go on Cameo, you're not worth $1,000. <laughs> I guess that's my ultimate point, is that you can't charge $1,000 because you're on Cameo. If you could charge $1,000 an hour, you'd be doing that in movies and shit <laughs> right like would... which i i think that's what i'm saying is that the rock is yeah. already doing that sure and, but, but I, you're yeah. saying now i get what you're saying is that because the rock is already doing that he shouldn't be on cameo in the first place it's for yeah like, the then people. I, I guess yeah you're right you're right in that i guess there was a cognitive dissonance in my head about that's why i don't think tom cruise or tom hanks or uh dwayne the rock johnson <laughs> could charge that because they just wouldn't be on it <laughs> so it doesn't in my head what it just if it doesn't was compute. for like it doesn't connect what if it was for let's say a charity if a bunch of celebrities got together and said okay i'm gonna do a, all of us are gonna do cameos and all the proceeds go to um the heart and stroke foundation honestly i think to save them the embarrassment i would just ask them to donate that money to charity <laughs> directly it's just such a that is true. They probably so here's the thing. Do that I, instead, but yeah, I, but I don't want to. I like I don't want to make fun of the people doing cameo because it's a fantastic grift. Like it's a great way for them to make money. Uh, and but oh, it's like for like the people like I mean for this person honestly, what has she done since Saved by the Lark Bell? Voorhees? I mean she like hats off to fucking her because she just got six grand for giving very <laughs> impersonal messages that had nothing to do with any major holidays like that's amazing <laughs> that she was able to uh grift those people out of it 
but it's just such a it's there is something inherently kind of embarrassing about a cameo i think we can agree right like sure yeah yeah you're right yeah kind of you know in the same way that like it's cool when celebrities and stuff do like those comic-con like picture thing where you get a picture taken with a person from a thing you like at comic-con yeah. Th- those are kind of inherently kind of you embarrassing know, too. well you know some of those people pay to even get in line to get a signature with these people too like that's a by those people do you mean nerds <laughs> <laughs> sure but like no i've seen some people i know people who went and got like a signature from like the guy from walking dead yeah, nerds. <laughs> no, nerds. No, 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 I'm talking about my friends. <laughs> no, you mistake me. No, 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 I know people personally who've done it. I've done no, it. No, I'm saying, yeah, there's, exactly. There's nothing wrong with the person, the people going to do that, because who wouldn't want to take a picture, take, get a t- picture taken with, like, an actor they love or, you know, whatever. No, I, like, I didn't do that. Okay, we did, I don't know if we mentioned on this, but <laughs> Tim got us a big time Tommy <laughs> cameo. <laughs> And I loved it. I loved receiving that. But there is, a, like, for them, I feel like there's a bit of a, it's like a dancing monkey situation, right? There is a, a veneer of, like, that it's it's not, that... I, I yeah. Is it the novelty You know, of I don't know. I don't know how to say it that isn't mean, because I don't want, want to say it mean, because it's, like... No, but if you want to say, like, they do it. quote, unquote, selling out, right? Like... Kind of. Yeah. Or, like... I don't know. There is, like, there's an admirability to the hustle, like, to be like, yeah, why wouldn't I? This is easy. This is money for all rope. Like, I can just do this anytime I want and make some cash. And that's great. But also, again, if you were Dwayne Johnson (laughs) or you were Tom Hanks or Tom Cruise, you wouldn't have to worry about this piddly shit at all. Right. But I mean, we should all be so lucky that people would pay us any amount of money for a cameo. But I, I'm just saying, like, somebody saw... like Big Time Tommy, he's just an Instagram influencer. We don't know. Exactly. He's not making, well, I don't know his financial situation, but I mean, for him to make an extra 50 bucks here and there, good for him. Yeah, I think he. Exactly. I think 100%. he should. I agree. I agree 100%. But like, when I scroll through and I see like an actor I've seen in TV shows selling his cameos for $14 an hour, <laughs> not an hour, not even an hour, $14. Then it's I don't know. There's something. It's it's uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> but it, it's funny. But that, anyway. it's, it's funny you say that. That within the actor community, there's a class structure based on your cameo price. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there is like yeah. right. There is. <laughs> and it's it and it and it and it also makes sense because half the p- point of what we're doing here is what we're doing here is important <laughs> at all of what we're trying to accomplish here is when you find out it either makes sense or it doesn't you know what i mean like right. we all know we all know <laughs> what class structure these actors are in can we know for like for he's <laughs> big big can we know big can we know for me as well Incha, can we no know? absolutely not <clears throat> Alright, that was Cameo! Now I know you're just a cameo. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Now I know you're just a cameo. Oh, oh, oh. Um, alright. Uh, Incha, would you film run Bad Day at Black Rock? I would. It's a slow burn you would film run this movie i would remember there's three options i really really liked it um stop pressuring her (laughs) i'm just just... it's a really slow burn movie of course but like it kind of it left me satisfied at the end at least and then it has a great set of actors Mm. i mean you know Anne francis was entirely wasted but spencer tracy i thought was like a complete and utter badass so yeah Hell yeah. yeah but... We didn't even mention the fact that he makes a fucking Molotov cocktail one That was at the end. so dope. <laughs> it was dope. It was pretty he cool. Just I, fucking I, I roast Robert Ryan. <laughs> it was dope, right? It's so funny, like how nonchalant he's walking up and he just, ch- I don't know, he just chucks it at the rock and it blows up and he catches fire. I, it was. Like, I don't know how to say about this movie, but it was just so, like, <laughs> perfect that it worked out that way, I guess. I don't know. It's it a movie. It was it's perfect. Fucking it, movie. Out well. it is a movie. You know, it is. Uh, you know what? That is kind of uh, poetic that he burned when he burned Kamoko. Uh, exactly. It's really nice, yeah. It is. It's a nice little, you know, turnabout's fair play. Right. Uh, I will say I will say it's an easy film run for me 
uh, because I chose it. I love it. Honestly, one of my favorite movies ever. Uh, and I'll give you the final word, Tim. Uh, yeah, I'll field run this. This was pretty good. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, no, this is a film walk for me. I like I like the premise of it, and I wanted to like it. And not, even, even... not even a film crawl? No, I, don't know. I won't give it a film crawl. I don't think it was bad. I don't think it was a bad movie. Oh. I just didn't like it. It was literally a bad movie. It's called Bad Day at Black Rock. Hello. <laughs> Come on. Uh, no, like, and I mean, I, I like the the whole premise and like the slow unravel. Like, it's one of those things where you like you don't know what anybody is doing until a long way through it. And I didn't mind that. <laughs> where you're always guessing. It's and funny the because is the it's funny that you say you didn't mind. Okay, that makes more sense. When you don't know what anyone's doing <laughs> a long way through the movie, sounds dog shit. But then you like, but I like that. That's good. Um. But yeah, uh, I think I've made my problems with it known. A very, very slow film walk, I would imagine. Uh, yeah. A film drag your feet. <laughs> stop, uh, stop and look at the sunshine a few times. <laughs> the sunshine. Run your car off the side of the road. <laughs> so yeah, slowly. So walk slowly down a small incline, very slowly, so that you don't don't damage the car you're in. <laughs> As Ernest Borgnine just drives off of that Um Film recommendations. I'll go first. John Sturgis directed a lot of cool movies, including uh, Magnificent Seven, The Great Escape, and Ice Station Zebra. And if you like Lee Marvin, one of my other favorite movies is uh, Point Blank, uh, which he stars in and is great in. And, oh God, why can't I remember the name of the movie? Hold on. Another dope. Oh, The Killers. The band? And he no, <laughs> the movie The Killers, which has a great scene where John Cassavetes <laughs> punches Ronald Reagan in the face, <laughs> which is amazing. Good movie. Anyway, those those are my recommendations. Uh, if you want to watch another th- thriller, kind of slow burn mystery, whatever you want to call it, you can watch Prisoners from Jake Gyllenhaal and uh, Hugh Jackman. <laughs> And if you want to watch Ernest Borgnine and something else, you can watch Gattaca. <laughs> <laughs> Ernest Borgnine's in Gattaca? He's the cleaner guy, like, at, when he, like... At the... Yeah, at the place. The... I don't remember that. I gotta rewatch Gattaca. <laughs> He's not in it for very long. Interesting choices. Good choices. <laughs> uh, intro. Um, mine are Deadwood, obviously, um, but Touch of Evil and Strangers on a Train and... N- there's this like Sundance show called No One Saw a Thing, which is about uh, the killing of Kid Mc- Kid McElroy, um, who was like a bully in a town, and the town kind of like ganged up against him. Not ganged up against him because he was already the bully in the town, but they murdered him, and then no one else saw anything in that town. They were just like, "Yeah, we murdered him, but uh, nobody's gonna say anything about who did it or why." Bye. And yeah, it kind of reminded me of this a lot. Yeah, that sounds exactly like this. <laughs> However, uh, Kamoko wasn't a bully. Yeah. <laughs> just just trying a to, we don't know that. We don't know that. We don't have enough information. <laughs> yeah, just he got some water and people didn't like him. And I think ultimately, I didn't... that's what we should take away from him. <laughs> I didn't know the <laughs> director of this. If you get water, people won't like you. I didn't know the director Pardon? of this like uh, did uh, The Great Escape. Yeah. Um, also, did I say... Magnificent Seven was the other one you said. Yeah, yeah. No, but he did... Let me double check so I don't sound like a fucking idiot. But didn't he do... No, he didn't direct it. But The Dirty Dozen is a movie that <laughs> uh, Ernest Borgnine, Lee Marvin, and... Who else is in it? I think Robert Ryan are in it. Like, three of the actors from this movie are in The Dirty Dozen, so... Hmm. I'll suggest that, too. I like The Great Escape. Yeah, The Great Escape rules. It's a good movie. We used to watch it every year in public school. What? Why? For, like, around Remembrance Day. Oh, I see. That must have been, like, the only VHS they had in the entire school. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, weird that they wouldn't switch things up a bit. <laughs> yeah. Especially because, presumably around that time, um, although maybe it'd be a little later, but what was it was 98 that Saving Private Ryan came out? And I watched that a couple times in school because teachers loved showing that movie. You want... Saving Private Ryan in, like, public school? Yeah. Really? That seems like a very violent movie for 10-year-olds. I watched it in Catholic mm. school. 
there you go. Jeez. Just the opening. But I mean, I, the, uh, there's always like a an allowance for realistic, like educational violence. <laughs> you know what I mean? We right. watched in fucking high school. We watched the Romeo and Juliet where the lady gets her boobs out. In high, remember that one? Wait, like the the Leo <laughs> Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> No, 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 why, the one... I don't know why in my mind, I'm just like, Tim, boobs? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, it was uh, Zeffirelli, I think. Is that the name of the director? It was, uh, hold on, I'll look it up. Yeah, 1968, Franco Zeffirelli. It was Michael York, Olivia Hussey. Oh, um, the classic Romeo yeah. and Juliet. Yeah, oh. but she... Uh, pops him out <laughs> and I, I remember we watched it in class i, I don't think i've ever seen that but one. those were those were educational tits <laughs> so they were allowed you know what i like i do like the real one though <laughs> you know what i do like education yeah i like you know what i like the leo one too tim hair uh john leguizamo and harold perino are the best parts of it you've seen the leo one ain't you i have yes it's off the list don't can't watch it oh. don't particularly care for it but that's fine <gasps> Paul Rudd's in it. Is he really? <laughs> yeah, he plays the prince or whatever at the dance. Oh, Paris, Paris. <laughs> He's the one who Juliet's supposed to like be with at the dance, but then she notices Romeo and is like, "Oh, I want to get with that guy too." <laughs> or, or instead, not. To... <laughs> Man, it surprised me. Like he was in Friends too. Like it surprised me how long he's been around like the industry. I think we can all. Oh, he was in. Uh... Oh, it's so funny. He's bad in it, and it's a terrible movie. But uh, um, Halloween 7? Which one was it? 6? <laughs> 6. I think Halloween 6. He was he was the little boy that, uh, that Jamie Lee Curtis babysat in the first movie, Grown Up. Oh. Or not Grown Up, like 22 or whatever. Uh, and he's not very good in it. And the movie is dog shit. But there's a really fun scene funny scene and i'll try to find a gif i'll cut this out because it doesn't matter to people <laughs> listening but there's a really funny gif of his reaction to trying to get somebody out of a room and then michael myers starts walking down a hallway towards him and it's like oh yeah you did just want to do comedy <laughs> for the rest of your life because it's such a like over dramatic it's so funny but i'll find it and send it to you so incha next week um what are we watching i picked the movie get over it uh, yeah we we are over it you pick the movie yep. <laughs> we allowed you <laughs> and I we picked finally the movie. allowed you get over it starring Kristen bell and ben i forgot his last name already <laughs> it's one of those like shakespeare movies from like the 1990s so, no early by Kristen bell do you mean kirsten Dunst? kirsten Dunst. yeah there we go see i'm getting ben, giving, ben, giving, ben, getting movie blindness from her um but yeah. Ben Foster? Ben Foster. That was his name. Yes. Um, so just just by coincidence, we happen to be talking about a romance, <laughs> like a, a Shakespeare adaptation, and you pick another Shakespeare adaptation. Remember when that was all rage? Like, they did the Hamlet with Ethan See, Hawke. See, that's what I want to talk was, about. Stop talking about it. Oh, There was O with Josh Stop Harbin. talking about it. The Man of Binds one. Stop talking yep. about it. No, we're going to talk so much about it. <laughs> be nothing to talk about now. <laughs> Okay, that's a interesting choice. I've never seen it. I, I don't think I have either, but it looks like a movie I should have watched. I mostly picked it because of Tim. <laughs> oh. Because you had a bad day, you take taking one down, you sing a sad song just to turn it around. You said you don't know, you tell me don't lie, you work at a smile and you go for a ride. You had